The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey, very good evening, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Markets. My name is Chris, and Toronto is with us as well tonight. He will be taking a look at the same topic in uh, in just uh, just a bit. Before we start with this topic, one balanced approach is is more important than uh, no matter how many indicators, thousand, ten thousand, hundred. Uh, we're going to talk about this particular importance. Now, I know that uh, a balanced approach already doesn't probably sound that, that uh, interesting and that uh, exciting, perhaps. Um, maybe finding the best indicator in the world would have been more uh, more alluring for some, some traders out there. But the fact that you joined today shows that you're more interested, indeed, in a, uh, in a systematic approach than hitting a lucky shot, so that's good. Before we start, though, with this webinar, uh, please be aware of the fact that this webinar is intended for a global audience and therefore may not be suitable for everyone in here to find out if it is suitable or not. Take a look at AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence and contact an appropriate entity. Also please be aware of the fact that trading for exchange and global financial markets are considered high risk and they may, have, they may not be suitable for all investors and traders. Therefore please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is not advice and is for informational and educational purposes only. And by continuing watching this webinar, you agree with the disclaimer mentioned here. And you can request a copy of this disclaimer as well through the uh, aforementioned method of contacting the appropriate entity via AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com. All right, once again, welcome. This webinar is brought to you by Admiral Markets. And uh, we're going to take a look at why a balanced approach is the most important effect. Why is, for instance, and, you know, why is not only strategy important? Why is not only risk management important? Why would not only perhaps psychology even be important? Many people have actually tried to indicate, you know, what is the most important and give percentages to it. Well, you know, I don't know how relevant it is really to weigh topics. I mean, you could certainly make a debate and give good reasons to say, okay, risk, psych, it's 50% is about psychology, 95% is on psychology, 30% is strategy, 20% is risk. But to be honest, uh, it could be fun to talk about it. But uh, the real important thing is to find the all-round approach because if you lack any of these things, no matter how much percentage you would give in importance to them, to me it seems incomplete and it seems like driving a car with one wheel missing at least. So it's uh, it's not going to work. So all things are relevant, psychology, risk management, and strategy. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. What are the basics to become a better all-round trader? Multiple indicators create confusion and error and fear, greed, and risk management is our focus. So these are kind of our things to look at. So first of all, maybe, th talking about a lot of indicators, if you have a lot of indicators on your chart, what value do they have? Many, some at least, could think, well, there are a lot of indicators, so there must be you know, a lot of value, a lot of information there. And uh, well, at the, to a certain degree, I mean, the more information you have, the more, let's say, well, the more, the more, I should say, the more indicators and tools you have, there is a certain point that you get more information out of it. That's true. But it also becomes clustering and confusing. It's perhaps it's kind of like a graph. I mean, some traders trade without any tools and indicators. They do fine as well, so it's not impossible. But they get perhaps a bit less information than a person who adds, here's the number of indicators at the bottom, number of indicators, and this is confusion. All right. So if if you have a lot of indicators, no, no, wait. If you have no indicators, it's not so confusing. Actually, it's not confusing at all, right? And then there's the profitability, making decisions. So it could be profitable, but and, and less confusing, but maybe not as profitable as with some some indicators, right? It's getting a bit complicated, maybe. But the point is that if you have a lot of indicators, right? Big number of indicators is going to be very confusing. So there's kind of that optimal point. If I do it again, here you have no indicators. And if you add indicators, at the beginning it's going to have benefit. 
That's my point. It's going to have benefit, benefit, benefit. But eventually, adding more is not going to is going to be annoying because you're going to create chaos and confusion, and it's going to go down down like this until eventually you hit a point that it just doesn't have any sense to add more. Now, where that point is is, of course, a big debate. What the optimal number would be? Some would say zero. If you're trading only price action, uh, some could say one or two, three indicators extra, and you got the best mix. Maybe some even say I add uh, ten maybe some 20, but I mean, obviously we can all agree that if you add more than 20, it's, it's, it's going to be too much probably. Um, and if you add more than 100, it's just crazily busy. So there's a point somewhere there where the effectiveness goes down. That's the point. Right? In any case, we can all agree that 1,000 would have zero value. Invisible charts, complete, a complicated decision-making process or unclear trading plan, a total paralysis of analysis eventually, not knowing what to do, entering wrong, jumping in trades, chasing the market, you name it, it's all there. All kind of things, right? And at that one point or that few points where it, it still remains sensible from zero basically to, I don't know, 20, you know, one could debate exactly what's the best number, but it's all above a certain a uh, average that makes sense at least, right? It's still good. 20 is on the high side, but okay. You know what I mean? But then eventually you drop below that point where it just doesn't make sense anymore. That's my point. And then you get all this stuff. Even if you had the most perfect indicator, you would not see it if you had so many indicators. It would be lost in chaos. And not only that, but it causes many errors. Um, you wouldn't know how to use them, what kind of sequence to use them, and uh, it just be very complicated. So what we want to do is limit errors as much as we can. We want a decision-making process that is simple, understandable, preferably that can be explained even to someone of a younger age uh, that is not into trading and you could kind of say it in a simple way that it would make sense. Let's say it this way. You can write it on a back of a business card or something like that, right? In a certain degree. I mean, um, obviously there's going to be, your trading plan is going to be a bit longer than the one sentence or two on a business card, but at least the core of it, let's say. And if we have that, then we are going to have more, less errors. Because the more complicated the training plan is, the more errors we're going to have. It's just that that relationship is going to be there. Right? Number of errors, sorry, I'm very in a, in a graph mood, as you can see. Uh, number of errors versus complicated. The more complication, the more number of errors. It's just and probably it actually increases like this, faster and faster, accelerates. And errors, ultimately, uh, I would say there are two things that are important. Limiting errors, limiting mistakes and inaccuracies, and then secondly, trying to get an edge that we build on day after day. Our first step is limiting errors because those are costly. If you take away errors, you could already quickly shift from heavily losing to maybe close to break even. Or, yeah, it depends, of course, but let's say roughly. Or from slightly lost maybe into even sometimes positive territory. You know, it, you would be surprised how, uh, how that can help. So, this would be something quite chaotic. I think there are not many indicators. There are only actually trend lines on it. But this, too, would already be maybe not so handy to trade, would it? Or how about this? This was also a bit too much. It's actually my own chart a while ago for my wave analysis with Admo Markets. I decided to cut it down. I decided to, to take away some stuff because I thought it was overly, overly crowded. I thought it was too much information. And decided to get rid of a few things, bring it down to more of the core, then leave it like this. So let's talk now about, let's move on and talk about uh, solutions instead of problems. Uh, advantages of, of using it as more as, a, as an approach, right? Looking at it as a systematic approach. Now, the word system and processes are not that exciting, as I already said at the beginning. Uh, but at the end of the day, boring trading is actually successful trading. If your trading is still exciting, 
then you're kind of still learning things, trying out things. That's an ex that's a cool place to be, uh, but ultimately, it's not a place where you're going to have that that consistency because if it's that exciting still, uh, you're more geared towards learning things than implementing something that you know very well and you're going to do it routinely in a ritual like every, every day, every every trade. You know, once it gets into that mode, it's becoming more of a of a, of a process in a way, right? Or a rhythm maybe, but a rhythm that doesn't like get your heartbeat up to a 200 per rate minute or something like that, you know? So in this case, in, in, indicators and tools have a, a role and a purpose. We know what to do each step. We know how to use them, the tools and indicators each step or anything, you know, any, any part of the way. We know the rules, let me say it this way. Uh, everything has a defined purpose, nothing is duplicated. Uh, unclear, and uh, yeah, basically each each step of the way is is each step of the process is is clear. All right, so that's the first thing. Let's see, second thing, approach to what? Well, first of all, entries, of course, exits, almost more importantly, risk and psychology. If we get this going, if we have good good plans for this, then we've covered the most basic uh, and fundamental things. Anything else that we could still add to that uh, could be a nice extra, could be a good bonus, could lift our results a bit more, but ultimately we need to have this ABC in our pockets. So once again, entries, exits, risk and psychology. So we'll be talking about these things now. Entries, I'm going to use the Tofta model, and for exits, we're going to talk about trade management. What is this, this, this Tofta? I've created it myself for my own trading, and it's a model that's supposed to help me with entering. If you've joined our uh, or my live trading room with Admiral Markets, you've heard of it before. Tofta model basically is a abbreviation, trying to make it easier for you and me to understand what I'm looking for. So trend is the first thing. Defining the trend doesn't mean I always have to trade with the trend, but I first look at trend. Is there a trend? Yes or no? If yes, what direction? And what time frames? Opportunity. Is there something of interest? So that depends on the trend, whether there's an opportunity. If I want to trade on a particular pair with the trend, the opportunity would be a pullback. If there's divergence, that's not going to be an opportunity. But it could be an opportunity if I'm looking for a reversal trade in point A. So it, it depends. B depends on A. Once we have A established, then we can look if there is a B. And if yes, I'll move on to C. If not, I'll skip that pair and go on to a new currency pair. The more you focus on one currency pair, the more you're going to be more flexible with A. If you focus on many pairs, you can be more diligent or more demanding for the type of environment you see in A. If you're trading only one pair and you only want to trade with trend, you're not going to be trading that much. So you're probably going to be a bit more accommodative on point A. All right, so anyhow, point C would be filters. So if, if a and B are met, and we find a, a pair that has that, a pair and time frame that has that, then I, you know, we would switch the, the thinking caps. Instead of looking for opportunities and positive things, why could the trade go right? What things could be wrong with the trade? So we turn it around and start to critically look at it and see what could be wrong with it. Now, of course, you want to limit that to a certain number of filters, because if you were to use too many things, eventually you always bump into something that's wrong with the trade. You got to have that balance. I like to use tops and bottoms. Uh, depends which time. I mean, the, the time frame depends on the on the strategy. If I would be using uh, a 30, 15 minute chart, I would be looking at the tops and bottoms of the daily chart, right? And uh, weekly candle highs and lows. 
if I'm looking at one hour, four hour, I'm going to be looking at uh, also daily chart tops and bottoms, but also weekly chart tops and bottoms, not at daily highs and lows, for instance, though. So it depends on the time frame. You want to find a balance between that. You can always use sensible trend lines. You don't want to exaggerate. A moving average could help too. You know, you have to find a balance if you don't use uh, 50, 10, 20 moving averages, of course. One, two, for instance. And uh, and 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 an oscillator for divergence could be ideas. Now, depending, of course, you might have some other things already in your in your mind. Just try to find that balance. Uh, trigger is something. The difference between point D trigger and and B is the fact that an opportunity is very vague still. There is divergence. So as a reversal trader, I'm interested. That's still quite, you know, okay, fine, but it doesn't define much. It's not very specific. Point D does that. It really looks for something very precise. So it could be for this reversal uh, divergence person trader, the trigger could be a reversal candlestick pattern, engulfing bearish twins, bullish twins, for instance. That could be the trigger. doesn't have to be the entry. That's point E. Could be the entry. D and E could be equal to each other, but E could be different from e, D. The entry could be different in the sense that, um, in the sense that, for instance, you see the engulfing twins, but you take the break of the lower high, or uh, you look for a retracement of the bearish engulfing twins. So that, those kind of ideas you could have, right? You look for a break on the lower time frame. We see engulfing twins in the four-hour chart, but we're looking for a fractal break on the 15 as a confirmation. Or we look for a trendline break on the 30. Those kind of things. All right, trade management. Now we're looking at the exit part of things. Let's take a look at the exit. Stop loss and TP, of course, logically, and uh, time stop loss, time factor. Lots of focus on entries, but not that much on exits. So there are various ways one can actually incorporate, uh, of course, stop loss and TP. You could look at a tight one, tight stop loss, aiming for um, a looser TP, try to get a lot of reward and risk. Obviously, the win percentage is going to be low. low. You can go for a looser stop loss and a loose TP, aim for about a one-to-one -one relationship, or even go or, or two-to-one uh, to TP to, to stop loss, or you can go for a loose stop loss but tighter TP, go for an R2R that's maybe below one or around one. Uh, you could go for tight stop loss, tight TP, go for about one-to-one, one point five to one and all these particular combinations will have lower and higher win percentage, so it depends on what we like the most. In general, though, there's also this time factor that you want to take into mind. The longer it takes for trade to develop, there's eventually, I think, a moment where uh, the odds are skewing against us if it takes too long. What moment that is, it's difficult to say, but if you look at the number of candles, uh, I tend to, within like 48 candles is often pretty good, 50, uh, within 100 would be typically what I would expect to be the max. And if, if you go over that, it's quite long. And typically, if you see, for instance, price uh, hesitating too much at a certain point, it's certainly a indication of indecision, something to, to, to think about. So it's, it's either you can use a trail stop, to take a decision away from your trade or even exit the market. Exits ultimately uh, are very, very difficult because the market is always changing and we're always getting new information. Whether you incorporate that new information and use it or you ignore it is a difficult choice. If you ignore it, you have a set and forget strategy. The advantage is, is that you kind of just let the market noise, forget about it, you let it go by, 
and you just have a fixed plan, that's it. Very straightforward, doesn't require much time to monitor. If you do incorporate new info, you, you are a bit more hands-on, it requires more time, you could be perhaps more better in exiting at a more sensible spot than just setting it and forgetting it, but you're also prone to make mistakes, for instance, and or not able to monitor it and or um, eager to get out against your plan and even if you follow your plan, your plan could not be the optimal exit and you would still be annoyed about that. So it brings a lot of emotions with it. So it's, it's uh, which, one we pref which one is good for us really depends on our own psychology. It's something that eventually we'll have to find out while trading and if we keep track of our emotions during trading, think about what things annoy us and what our strengths are, uh, then the answer will be in that area. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's not a precise answer because I, I will never recommend something A, A and B for everyone because I don't think it will be valid for everyone, unfortunately. That's just uh, my point. But exits is important to put a lot of time in evaluating your exits and comparing it to your plan and comparing it to maybe some improvement points. If, uh, if you, as I said, point E, if you take those decisions, it will be um, ultimately a set of forget or more active management. So psychology and risk, controlling the risk basically is our goal number one is to live to trade in our day, preserving our trading capital ultimately of course important because without the trading capital are we really going to continue, can we continue, when can we continue, how long is it going to take before we get revenue capital again. So it's important for long-term consistency. Got to preserve that capital. Don't want to lose that capital. We don't want to lose too much of that capital either. Otherwise it would take too long to get back to the zero point. If we lose half we're going to have to double our account just to get back to our original starting point. So, yeah, you, you want to be careful with losing even in half. What is optimal drawdown? I mean, not optimal. I mean, what is a drawdown you can live with is only something you can answer. Um, I think that 50 is already in the, on the steep side. If you're willing to risk the entire capital, some are then uh, it's you know, you're a bit more riskier side of things. But uh, ultimately, of course, any, anyone can risk the entire job capital as long as the, that amount is low enough for us really not to matter. Uh, but if you're talking about a normal trading capital that does matter a bit at least, then you want to preserve it. If it's not an all-in all risk, very high risk kind of fund, then you want to preserve it, right? Then you want to maybe occur 30% drawdown, 20%, 10%, 40% maybe at max, but 50% is already very difficult to climb back. Controlling the psychology is a bit like the risk controlling in the sense that we want to preserve the mental capital because if we are freaked out to involve the bottle, I mean, a loss is going to be always to a certain degree annoying but if it's going to be emotionally hijacking us for the rest of the day or week, it's not a life either because then we're just going to be emotionally ruined in a way. We're not preserving our mental capital. I'm not saying that we, there's not ever going to be a time that you know, we're going to be reflecting in the evening and thinking, oh, I wish I did that or that. I mean, it's difficult to avoid at all times, but ultimately if, we, if that happens too much, then it's consuming you and yeah, it's, it's, it's going to take away the menta mental fitness during the time it matters, which is then the next trading day as well. So preserving it is, is an important task. So risking, ultimately risking something that fits within your psychology is important. Let's say at the end of the day, the only, if, if you're a more conservative trader, let's say, you know, if you're risking, you can handle a quarter percent of risk. If you lose a quarter, you're like, of course, that's a pity, but you know, you're still like, okay with that. It's it's fine. You you go you, during the evening, you just forget about it. You 
do whatever you you're, you're wanted to do in the evening. That's it. You can still trade normally the next day. If that let's say for that person, that level is a quarter percent risk. So find that optimal kind of level, and for the moment risk that point, or even go even go a bit below maybe that optimal point. Go by 0.15. Of course, don't go so low that ultimately uh, it's like it doesn't matter at all. If let's say you're risking 0.001%, right? if that's possible, even but okay, um, 0 0.0 0 0.05. That might be too little, maybe. If you seriously want to trade, if you're testing, that could be fine, by the way. But let's focus now on serious account that you really want to gain something from it. That would be probably too little. But maybe going to open 1.5, open 2 and seeing if you're okay with that could be a good first step. If you beforehand think that open 2.5 is okay. Let's talk about a different trader. How about a trader that has 1% in mind? Okay, don't go for 1%, go for 0.7 at first. See how that goes. How about a trader that feels comfortable about trading 2%? Two and a half percent. Maybe that person wants to start out with 1.5 or two. How about a trader that feels comfortable about risking 10 percent? Traders should still be risking only two percent, right, or three percent, max, max, max five. Even if you think you can mentally handle it, and then of course there's still a cap of 0.1, which is preserving the trading capital. So even if 0.2 exceeds 0.1, then one over one overrules two, right? In the sense that uh, you have to control the risk as well, even if you can psychologically handle it. At least if you want to trade a normal account, not some aggressive account. Even with an aggressive account, you probably wouldn't want to go above five. But I mean, if you really want to be a very, very aggressive account. There could be situations where you maybe risk five to ten, but you're really, really risking the entire capital. And that should be only done with a really, 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 <laughs> with emphasis on really, uh, capital that you know that you will and could lose everything and should expect it. All right, uh, live example. Let's see. Your dollar. For our major week here, I've been talking about your dollar shorts now for the entire week, and that hasn't really helped me that much. As you can see, that was it was not my week this week with regard to uh, the euro dollar. I did expect some retracement, but I was more looking for uh, a turnaround in here on this week, a bit below it as well. Ultimately, got one more push up. Now, last week's high ultimately didn't get broken either, but as you can see, price really challenged it very seriously. So yes, that was a tough one for me. But let, let's take a look at the next short here. Remember, we still didn't break last week's high. What kind of trade management would exit point would be optimal for your dollar? It's difficult. It really depends on how you trade, what your trade plan is. Uh, what kind of flexibility you have in that plan, and uh, what tools you use, and stuff like that. There's so many exit potentials. It's so important as well. Um, the entry, for instance, is is quite straightforward. It's either the close of the the pin bar itself, the break of the low, or the retracement. All of them have different points. Stop loss would be above the candle high. But what about the exit? Various things are possible, right? If one is very conservative, we can put a fib from swing high to swing low here and look at the first big fib, which is the 50 in this case, because typically the shallow fibs wouldn't matter in this scenario. Why? Because we're in a downtrend on the daily chart. And if you're going to get a bigger correction to the upside after a downtrend, Usually you get a deep fib, anywhere from 50 to 88.6. So the exit, back to the exit, 50 is probably the most secure exit. If you're aiming for a lower fib, you're already aiming your TP at a spot 
where the probabilities are already slightly decreasing because you're already projection, project, projecting your TP at one support level further, which means that price has to break through more than multiple support levels before it gets to your TP. The more support levels between price and your target, the lower the chances price is going to get to your TP. That's basically always the equation in our mind. If you exited at the 50 fib, you had 80 pips in your pocket. Maybe 100. Worst case scenario, 68, depending on where you entered. Maybe you're in the trade still, and you're aiming for the 78.6 fib, which is what I'm thinking, personally. That's, that's what I think the, lot most best, the best TP is. Why? Because it's still, I think, a decent chance the price can get to that FIB. And I don't want to aim for anything that's lower because of the fact that there's a high chance that we can get a bounce first before we break this bottom. And also considering the fact that the weekend is getting close as well. But then the question is, would I want to do anything? Would I want to trail stop anything? along the way. Trail stops have the nasty effect of sometimes suffocating your trade. So one of the, the tips I tricks I do is looking for a strong candle before using a high or low of a, of a four or one hour candle or any candle in fact. Strong candle. I wouldn't recommend any and every candle for a trail stop. But if there's a significant candle, it might be worth it. Have these been significant candles? Yeah, true. Could be worth already putting the trail stop loss here at uh, 77. Reducing the risk, in my case, at least by um, 36 pips. One could do that discretionary or non-discretionary. It really depends what you like. This is more discretionary. I don't have any fixed rule. You can look at the one-hour chart and say, okay, I go above the fractals, or I go above every second fractal. The first fractal is this one. The second fractal is this one. There are many options. And whether you choose ultimately discretion or non-discretion, or just set and forget, you have to take a look at what is your strength and time commitment you have to monitor the trade as well. With the four-hour chart, that maybe is not so difficult but depends from person to person as well. So that wraps up my side and I'm going to pass it over to Tarantala. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you Chris for, for this great presentation. So if there, there are no further questions I can continue with uh, my part of the webinar. So Chris already told you about all those uh, great things about technical trading, technical movement to the price. I will be a little bit more theoretical today. So I will uh, give you insight of trading styles, different trading approaches, and what the balanced approach is, in my opinion. Okay. So. As you already know, before you even start to trade, you need definitely to, uh, to, to decide which kind of trader you want to be. So whether you will be scalping trader, intraday trader, intraweek trader, or investing trader. That is the first thing towards the, the right uh, balanced approach. Because uh, many people who start to trade think that they will always make money with the markets and they even don't know what these terms are. And I know that basically most of us who started to trade and at, a, at the beginning of our careers, we thought, oh, this can be easy, this is great, but we didn't, we, we never knew what scalping was, what, what these terms mean, intraweek, scalping, breakouts, whatever. So the first mistake uh, when you drop out of, uh, or out of uh, uh, the train is basically uh, starting to trade without any approach. So that is the first mistake that traders make. They want to trade, but they don't have a serious approach to trading. And I have heard a lot of times, even from some of my 
from people who know me here uh, where I live. Okay, you are well known for treasure. Tell me, can I make money with it? When I when I first when I when I hear the question, uh, can I make money with it? Uh, somehow I feel uh, like I don't want to talk to that person because it will take too much of my time and too much of my energy to explain that Forex is uh, it's not about making money, it's about risk management and afterward it's about making money. So what I can tell the, 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 that person is, yeah, you can make money but you need to have the right approach. You need to have business approach to it. So Forex should be traded basically as, as uh, should be taken as a serious business. If you don't have that approach to Forex trading as a serious business, you will definitely be, uh, you will be losing. I, I don't, I'm not talking about losing a trade or two. I'm talking about losing constantly. So you, you will never be in a profit. And I know many traders who, who really have the potential to be profitable, but they don't have an, even see a single month in a profit. And that is very, very bad, and that just proves one thing, that that kind of trader may be a good potential, but the approach is not good. So he doesn't have a, he, he doesn't or she doesn't have a good approach, balanced approach to trading. So the first thing you should decide, you, you need, you also need, you all need to know this, is whether you want to be a scalper intro the intraweek investing trader. So, would you like to scalp breakouts? Would you like to go with intraday breakouts? Would you trade intraweek chart pattern breakouts? I know what I do. I do intraday trading. In, the, in that term, <coughs> in, into that intraday trader, I can put scalping, scalp swings, intraday positioning, and counter trend. All above that, I don't do. I don't do. Intraweek setups can work out, and you, you know that they work out because we do that on session recaps. But those setups are still based on intraday analysis mostly. So we usually take intraweek setups uh, during the today, tomorrow, and sometimes the day after tomorrow. And those are not those are not intraweek trades because intraweek trades usually take weeks to develop. Okay, weeks to develop. Uh, for intraday trading, I definitely can uh, uh, definitely can uh, say that uh, 15 minutes and one hour are are uh, best for intraday trading. At least how I do it. I trade on, on a one hour time frame, but I surely know that you can zoom in into a lower time frame and, and trade 15 minutes. So basically that, that's all about intraday trading. You need to know the proper time frame, 15 minutes let's say, in and one hour trade, and you should trade during the first three hours of each session. So let's say you, you traded today, I put KDN setup, KDN set up, it went uh, it, into, uh, I don't know, 30, 40 pips of profit. It came to our zone and it was rejected and great. Now uh, I had a trader uh, one hour ago asking me, uh, uh, is that uh, setup still valid? It could be valid, but only if you traded it during the first three hours of, of session. Now it's the close of London session. New York session will get slower. The Sydney session will open in, I don't know, three, four hours. So yen, uh, Japanese session, Tokyo session will open up after the midnight. So why would we place any trades at the moment? So that is the good question because that is the balanced approach. Yes, CAD yen setup may still be valid, but I would never take it because we are not in the fast moving session. It's, it's the end of the session. Maybe I can put a CAD yen, I don't know, sell now and probably I would, I would wait six, seven, eight hours to develop. So at that time I would be sleeping. If I'm if I sleep and I have the trade, I always put my mobile phone, I don't know, at my desk or somewhere. Of course, not close to my head because I do, I don't like uh, uh, I I never put my mobile phone close to my head. It's not good for your health. So I put it I don't know two meters away on my desk, and usually during the night when I wake up random wake up, I check the trade. If I see that I'm in the profit, I, it's, it's 10 seconds, I do trailing stop, put my stop loss to, I don't know, break even plus 20 and I go to sleep again. So I am calm because I'm an intraday trader. I exploit momentum. I, I don't know what can happen in five months. You see, everyone predicted that euro dollar will fall to 21 and now euro dollar is sitting at 24, 24.50. 
and uh, predictions were that this month euro dollar will fall to 21 not this month last month and those predictions uh, trust also also went for this month 21 maybe it, it will be 21 but today it won't be 21 so that is the best that is the, the approach for me the best approach I like and I prefer intraday trades I know that we intraday traders are susceptible to weird price movements some, sometimes but that is why we use stop loss it's okay we use stop loss so we basically will save our trades for from getting stop, stopped out uh, if you don't have that kind of approach, if you don't use stop losses, if you don't know basically uh, which kind of trader you can be or you will be, you will ultimately lose because there is no way you can guarantee know what, what will happen. You just don't know what can happen. You don't know whether the price will move in your favor or not. You can follow the analysis. If that analysis is intraday, that means that that setup is valid for uh, fast moving sessions not for when price is not moving so even now let's say that you're in the trade in some pair okay good you're in the trade leave it be you have your stop loss you place your target so you wait but now it's not the time to open new positions so that is my trading style now there are different approaches to trading again there is the first thing which I call holy grail and many traders refer to that holy grail then we have free forums, we have PDFs, we have mentors, and we have webinars. Okay? Those are different trading approaches. Now, what the Holy Grail is? Holy Grail means that you are constantly jumping from system to system. Is this good? No, it's not good. Because if you search for Holy Grail in the sense of uh, different forex systems, you will not find it. Because it's easy to get the system and it's a lot easier to drop I know that from my personal experience because when I started to demo trade seven years ago basically I was also jumping trying to find the system and once the system is good okay great I'm very happy when system starts to lose it's much easier for me to drop the system and try to search for many new good systems across the internet that is that is a newbie approach and that is that is not false you know but we are teaching you not to do that that is why we always present you with good strategies and if that strategy is good and that is seriously good because we tested it then you need to basically just uh, just uh, you you need to adopt the strategy and you need to let the strategy fit into your trading style so if I let's say that I presented you counter trend trading strategy if it fits you good it's a good strategy now the only problem is does it fit you if it's okay then try to demo trade it one two three months that, that is good but it's not good if you constantly search is are searching for the strategies then when you find the strategy you give it a shot I don't know three weeks and you drop the strategy it's, it's not okay. So it's, it's about testing your psychology. Are you ready for Forex trading? Are you ready to, to use that particular strategy? Then test it. Use demo account and test it. Which dimension you want to live in? Do you want to live in price action dimension? Do you want to live in price action indicator cross dimension? Do you like to live in indicator based? Do you like to live in Bill Williams dimension? Do you like to live and trade harmonic dimension? So those are all different dimensions. The point is the same. Keep the risk low, manage your money, and make money. Keep the risk low, manage the money, and make money. And stay in the game as long as you can. That is proper forex trading. But then you need to know which dimension. Would you like to trade price action? If you trade price action, then you cannot trade the indicators, obviously. If you trade indicators, then you are definitely not trading classic price action. I'm not saying that it's the best. 
there are good indicator-based strategies which can really make you money. But you need to know which strategy you want to live, you want to trade. You cannot just tell me, okay, now I will trade price action. Because if you use the Bollinger Band, the stochastic CCI cross, you, don't, you know nothing about price action. If you use price action, you know something about harmonic, but you don't know anything about harmonic in its core. So those are different approaches. Those are different things. And don't search for Holy Grail because Holy Grail is within you. Your holy grail is the tri tripod of successful trading. We, we talked about it. That is the holy grail. Free forums. It's a good source of material for beginners. There are a lot of free forums across the internet. I just cannot name it, of course, due to copyright and marketing purposes. But there are really good free forums which you can find across the internet. And I support it as long as they do not use copyrighted material. Copyrighted material, no, everyone of us uh, would like to see some of those thingies, right? Not to, of course, not me, because I have my Camarilla Magdia, and I, don't, I just can test other systems. I don't trade other methods or systems. But, of course, when I started to trade, I also visited a lot of different forums to, to try to find some of those different strategies. Right? But the thing is, uh, there are a lot of copyrighted material, and uh, of course, if it's stupid things, let's say you, you need to pay 100 or 200 euros for some simple things, then I cannot say it, but you obviously need to know what you should do. Th those are stupid things, because there are a lot of marketeers who are selling simple Bollinger Band CCI crosses and try to suck you in to pay them. It's free, and it should be free. But if there are some good copyrighted material with, I don't know, full online courses, then it's not okay to steal that, you know. Still, you can use free forums to your, to your advantage, because free forums will give you a lot of free approaches to different kinds of systems. You can also brainstorm those forums with uh, different opinions. You know that I use a free section of spiders of uh, Forex Factor, it's called Spiders Den, and everyone is welcome to post there. I, am all, I will always brainstorm, I will always comment, I will always help all of those traders. That is why Forex Factory is good. I, I really like Forex Factory. It has commercial style, it has commercial threads, it has free threads. And I like to be on free threads, because I have never made any commercial on Forex Factory. I always keep it free, I don't market anything there, and I will always help new traders and experienced traders with uh, comments and with all kind of things. Okay? And that is why those free forums are good. You can also find different strategies. Good, it's a huge source of information. And I really fully support it, unless it's a copyrighted material, but not copyrighted material, Bollinger Band, uh, Stochastic Cross, those simple systems, you don't need to pay for that because those can be found free, find, those systems can be found free across the internet. Then we have PDFs. Again, PDFs are beginner source of information. It's good if you're a beginner, but they're not so reliable because they don't offer you a deep inside of the strategy you want to evolve yourself, yourself with. So for beginners, they are okay, but for experienced traders, they're not so reliable. Usually, there is not much information about the system. It only tells you, you it only, I don't know, tells you, uh, use this uh, indicator, at this point, place your stop there, uh, place your target price there, and then you go basically like a robot. You just follow the signals from the system. I don't like PDFs because it they doesn't give you critical thinking, so you cannot use your common sense. You just need to follow like a robot. And still, PDFs are not so reliable because th th they just do not use uh, history. You cannot see a history of that system or method in PDF. 
PDFs can be found on free forums, but as always, if you if you want to use that approach to trading, trading free PDF systems, then do that, but only first demo trade it at least three months before going live. Mentors are definitely the best way. There, there is a live teaching. This is what me and Chris also do, holding webinars and, men and mentoring. We are teaching you. We are giving you setups. We are, uh, we are basically helping you to become profitable. We are always here. We won't be disappearing, but there are some, uh, I cannot name it, some famous names which uh, publish a system, then open a trading room and then disappear for a long time. Just to be seen a year after that making money from a new system. Right? It's not correct. Mentoring is good because questions are always answered because you can see what traders are doing, you can see support, and it's definitely the best way of having interaction. Webinars are definitely the great way to stay in touch with latest Forex updates because Forex changes during time. Forex market changes, volatility changes, momentum changes. Different kind of things which we have been using are changing. So webinars are the best and great way to stay in touch with latest Forex updates. It's always good because you develop a connection with presenters. And it's good because every single of you I love to see here and I, I respect. Because you have the respect for us and it's a mutual respect. It's a great way to learn new methods. When a new method appears and if we test it, we will be presenting that method to you. So you can add something to your arsenal. Let's say you have intraday positioning system, but you still didn't find a good counter trend system. This is where we kick in. Or maybe you don't like to trade indicators, you would like to trade harmonic. That is where we kick in. Live social interactions. We are here responding your questions, communicating with you. And it's good even for experienced traders. Good thing. Because some experienced traders can also learn few things. Always. We are always learning from each other. Now, the balanced approach is always having 80 to 20 rule. The markets move 80% of the time technically and 20% of the time fundamentally. Those 20% it's technical trades with huge volatility. So it's 80 to 20 balanced approach rule. So that is why we have uh, those good setups each day from our analysis because we are moving 80% with the market. It's technical movement. That fundamental movement can either hit our stop loss unexpectedly or give us better trade. That is what I what I what I call alignment when fundamentals are aligned with technicals. So 20% of that is technical trade with huge volatility. So you can get into a better price. Don't cluster the charts. Do not have many of those indicators on the chart. If you're not sure how to do that, follow how to build a strategy webinar. And of course, pay attention to money management. This is what I always, uh, what I always recommend. So 80 to 20 rule is the first rule. I'm a technical trader, I follow it. So 80% of the time, markets move technically. That is why I have choose to be technical trader. And that 20% for me, fundamental moves are definitely huge volatility moves which can and will be aligned with technicals. Good approach to having a strategy is having one leading indicator, one lagging indicator, one support and resistance indicator. So don't cluster too much. So only one indicator leading, lagging and support resistance being, being let's say, dynamic pivot point. For entries, we use either Fibonacci retracement or entries such as CCI, Stochastic, MACD. So, lagging indicators, we use it only to confirm the trend. So, we don't use two lagging, leading indicators and two lagging. We only use one to confirm the trend, then leading indicator to confirm an entry or immediate trend depending on settings. And we use entry indicator to pinpoint an entry. 
For stop losses, for uh, uh, taking profits, we use dynamic or static support or resistance levels. So you, I just hate when I see that charts have three, four, five windows inside it. It, it. The best success ratio indicator will always win. So what is the use of having two linear indicator? The one which has better success ratio will always win across the second leading indicator. So you cannot use two leading indicators. It will confuse you. For filters, you use one leading, one lagging. Only one leading and one lagging. It's enough. And these support resistance indicators are used for placing entries at the, at the price or profit taking or stop loss place. And definitely balanced approaches. And avoid to be overconfident. If you are very successful, don't uh, give yourself the status of a god. You are not god. The god is only one. And we should not never be overconfident. We are traders. We are not market movers. Avoid pressure. If you lost a trade, try to avoid pressure to enter immediately after you lost a trade. Believe me, guys, that is a bad thing. That will lead you to revenge trading. Clear your mind. Always have <coughs> sorry, a clear mindset when you trade. Don't be afraid of missing out. If you missed an entry, okay, there will be another chance. So a good example is a trader who asked me uh, one hour ago, uh, should he again place a trade of Kedian? And I told him, no, it's not the time. It's Now it's not the time. Even though the trade might be successful, it's not the time. The markets are slowing now. Don't be afraid of missing out the trade. You will have your trade tomorrow. Perception of your mistakes. Always be perceptive of your mistakes. Don't over-trade winners. If you win one for, for this day, Good. Don't over trade it. Don't decrease size traded, lot size. If you trade with a proper risk management, then use correct lot size. Simple as that. Don't be impatient. Because if you are impatient, it will lead you to non-balanced approach of early entry which does not have a technical insight into it. So don't be impatient. The trade will come to you. You don't run to the trade. Trade will come to you. So this is my view. We are already now uh, basically at the end of the webinar. If you have any questions, you can definitely ask me. But I think that it is much easier to, if you visit these webinars, to, pers to have a perception of what we do and what you should do in order to be profitable and continue to be profitable. Because all of these things will get into your head and you will be definitely applying a good and yet proven things which will qualify you to be constantly profitable. So I don't see any questions, guys. So thank you for listening to us. We will be here with you soon. Don't forget to sign in for weekly recap, uh, live sessions, and many of those great things which will surely come. Have a nice weekend, guys. Trade safe, and I wish you many green pips. Cheers.